What's up guys, Dom Kirby here. Today I want to talk about moving from Gmail into Outlook. Maybe your company is moving from Google Workspace to Microsoft 365, or maybe you're just moving your personal email from Gmail into Outlook. I'm going to show you Outlook on the web compared to Gmail and show you some of the features in Outlook on the web that you can take advantage of to really help you get the most out of Outlook. It'll also make this transition a little easier as there's definitely some functionality there that's more Gmail-like that I think will help you out. Let's check it out. All right, here we are in yet another demo account that I've whipped up. This is just a standard Gmail account. It's not a Google Workspace, that, but that's okay because Gmail uh, in Google Workspace and a Gmail personal are, are the same thing pretty much, right? There's a couple minor differences, but by, by and far, they're the same. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is talk about a few different features that I see most commonly taken advantage of. Now, if there's features that maybe your customers are asking about or that you have questions about, drop them in the comments below. I'll answer when I can, or maybe someone else will chip in. Um, but also, if there's enough content, I'll make a follow-up on those features that get collected in the comments. All right, so let's get started. I think the most widely used thing in my experience in Gmail is labels. All right, I was a long-time Gmail user, and I used the heck out of labels. I love labels. So Outlook does things a little differently. We'll get into that in a second. But just to show you, I've got like an operations label and a bills label and a uh, message labeled with multiple labels, a lot of simple stuff going on here, right? Um, but let's look at Outlook. So by default in Outlook, we store our messages in folders, right? So I can take any folder I want. I'm going to go Google Developers, drop that in Gmail stuff, right? Pretty easy. Um, it's all straightforward, right? But the problem is that I think most people will run into when making this transition is that it's no longer in my inbox. And maybe I wasn't quite done dealing with that email or I want to be able to follow up on it before I file it away. So the way we do that is we use categories and categories function just like labels for the most part. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this message here. It's categorized cat photos. According to my research of migrations, we do cat photos is a big topic. So I'll click on cat photos here. It's actually going to search for all messages with cat photos uh, as a category, which is a really neat feature. But if we keep going and dig in, Let's go to this uncategorized message. We'll categorize. We can pick cat photos or any of the ones I've made here. But I can also manage these categories. So let's take a look at managing the categories. Um, you could see Outlook ships with six. I've customized four, but they're basically just named after the color, right? Red category. You can obviously create categories and pick a color, I'll edit the existing categories to give them names. But here's one thing that I really like, and I really think uh, as you're transitioning from Gmail, you're going to find useful. If it's an important label, I can click this little star here, and I'll show you what that did in just a second. But I can do this many times as I want, and it puts it in my favorites section right here, right? So if I expand this, sometimes you'll log in and it's hidden, so you got to expand it. I can see Bills was one I had starred, and now I've starred Cat Photos. So that's like a default search, right? We call this a search folder. And it's not a traditional folder in the sense that I move messages into it. But what it is is I click it, and it's like a saved search query for that data, right? Super cool. Um, so I can do that. I can categorize all these messages. And even if I take this message, for example, and I move it to a folder, right? No longer in my inbox. It's still here because it's labeled cat photos or categorized cat photos, right? So a super nifty feature as you look to make that transition. Um, but let's go ahead and go back to inbox and let's play around with actually categorizing the message. Now, of course, I can receive a message, right click, categorize, and we're going to call this one uh, you know, operations, that's all well and good, right? But if you're using labels, you probably also have taken the time to come in here and build filters that automatically label messages, right? We can do the same thing. Outlook calls them rules. And in my opinion, they are so much more powerful than filters. But let's get in. So you'll see, uh, I'll do that again. I click the three little dots here, the ellipses, and click create rule on a selected message. And it'll give me a, a simple one, like you want to move to a folder. No, I want something more powerful. So I'm going to click more options. Alrighty. So it pre-fills some of this for us, right? For all messages from Planner. And I'm just going to add a test here so that if I uh, get confused later on, I can delete it. But um, you'll see by default, it says from Microsoft Planner. I can do all kinds of things. If it contains, if it's from, if I'm on the CC line, whatever I want. Um, but we're going to keep the from here. 
and move to folder is the most common. Pin to top is another handy one. Maybe messages from the big boss you want to pin to the top, make sure you get to them. But what I can do here is mark the message and I can categorize it. All right. And if I categorize it, we'll say operations. That's going to automatically categorize any message I get from Planner as operations, which is super duper handy, right? It's already labeled for me, super simple. I can even check run rule now, and it'll go and search in my inbox for any of those messages, and it will label them operations. You can see it's done that with a couple messages. Uh, granted, I don't think I have a ton here from Planner, but you see my point as it categorized this one as well. So now it's categorized for me as I receive the message. And then I can take a look at things, uh, take care of the email, whatever I need to do. And then I can file it away or I can archive it. So just like you probably archive messages in Gmail, right? If I check this here and click the little archive box, it archives it, right? Well, I can do the same thing. The difference in Outlook is it's going to just stick it in a folder and get it out of my mailbox. So I'm going to archive this one. Now, the first time you do that, and I have unfortunately already done it on this account, but it'll say, hey, what folder do you want to use for your archive? And you'll just pick archive. Uh, if you don't have one, it really kind of depends on when your account was provisioned. You might not have an archive folder. You'll be able to make one there. Um, but now it's in the archive folder, right? But the cool thing is, is if I create a favorite here for operations, no matter what folder it's in, right? I'm still going to see it here because it's searching for messages marked operations. All right. So you could see here, it even tells me that this one's in the inbox, this one's in the archive, and this one's in my message center folder. Super duper handy, right? Um, you can see here, this one's also labeled bills. So if I drill down more, it's going to look for messages labeled bills or operations. So that's really to show you that I can categorize multiple, excuse me, I can add multiple categories to a message. Right, so if it's multiple things, I can categorize just like I would apply multiple labels. All right, so a minute ago we talked about taking action on an email, and that's an important thing, right? We very often get emails that result in something for us to do, right? So in uh, Gmail, you probably start it, at least that's how I did it. I always start something I needed to do something with. Well, Outlook has a very similar concept, and they call it flagging. So you'll see this message has a checkbox, and that means I flagged and completed the message. In this example, uh, I'm going to flag this message. If I just click it, you'll see here it says flag for follow-up. By default, it's due the same day. A really cool thing here is I can right-click for flagging. Or let's pick a different message, right-click. Maybe I don't need to do this till next week. So it's going to slate that task out for next week. Um, so I can flag emails for follow-up. You see they stand out here too, right? And then if I need to, let's say I get a lot of email, which I do. I can filter and choose flagged, and it'll only show me the emails that I flagged. So I can have a really focused view on the tasks I need to work. Um, but what's really cool and which really leads me on to the next feature is I've got this add to tasks button here and it creates a Google task. Wow, this account really is new, I guess. There we go. It creates a Google task with a message attached, right? Well, Microsoft does the same thing. If I click in here and I click to do and we give to do a moment to load up, it's actually going to pull my flagged emails in from Outlook as a flagged email task. Now on this tenant, oh, it did work. I've been having some issues lately, but I can actually see it here in my to-do list. So I use this a lot, all right? I have to-do pulled up and I go to my flagged email all the time and I can click here, click open an Outlook and it's gonna take me right to that message in particular, which is very cool. And then I can check it off in to-do and come back here, whoops, back to Outlook. And you'll see it checked it off here. It was this message, so it takes care of that uh, bi-directionally for us, which is pretty awesome. You can also see, if I click here, it pulled in the Google and the Bills categories, right? So it even lets me create views here where I can see my categories. Super awesome. Um, and then I think, what was it? Yep, yeah, must have been this one where I said, I don't need to worry about that till next week. You could see it bumped it out uh, as far as due date is concerned to next week pretty awesome and pretty simple to use. All right, so that's a few of the top uh, items I see used when it comes to mail, right? Now, if we look at uh, settings, and we see all settings here. Of course, I've got my Google settings. Um, a lot of this doesn't necessarily apply when it comes to Microsoft. A lot of these are Google specific. Um, of course, I've got a vacation responder, which is equally available right here in Outlook. Go to view all Outlook settings. And then I've got automatic replies. It's the same concept, right? Um, 
I've also got, you know, other key important features in Outlook on the web uh, that are going to be important for sending mail, such as message handling, um, which again, this is pretty unique to Outlook, but a lot of the functionality you're probably using Gmails here. More importantly, things like mail signatures are here and uh, default fonts for my messages and things like that are all in here. So you may just need to explore a little bit. But for the end of this video, I want to transition into Calendar. So we have a Google Calendar here, right? And I've just put a couple meetings on here as an example. So I've got some meeting and it's got a Google Meet, right? And then I've got an operations meeting. So just drop some meetings in here. You know, we can drop another meeting in here if we want to. And then we can assign it a color. So it's all there, right? Let's look at Outlook. Now, here's one thing I really like about Outlook's category system as it compares to other systems, okay, Gmail in particular. So I'm going to create a meeting tomorrow. I'm going to call this the operations meeting. Now I can right-click on my meeting, and I can categorize. And hey, do these categories look familiar? That's because they're the same thing, operations. So now this is an operations meeting. And the very cool thing is, and, and one of the things I love so much, is that it's the same exact category. So I can use those same search folders. If we go back to my folders here, it's going to pull these items back in. Now, this is a mail view, but you can actually search by categories across your entire Exchange Online Mailbox content. Um, of course, the other feature that people use nowadays is going to be virtual meetings. So if I click more options here, you see I can make a meeting, a Teams meeting with the click of a button. So I still do have that available to me. So this is just a few of the top features I see people struggle with when they're transitioning from Gmail into Outlook. I hope these really help you out. And if you need any assistance or you really want to see more features, like I said, drop it in the comments below. If enough content builds up there, I will go ahead and create a follow-up for you to take advantage of. Um, so thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.